Welcome to Virtualize Everything, where we strive to educate and inform the viewer about technology and technology-related topics around the world of virtualization. Tonight's video presentation is going to be another one on working on projects with our home lab LXD server that is hosted on a Raspberry Pi 3. That's right, you don't need the latest and greatest Raspberry Pi hardware to do this project. Although, if you have it, it'll work just fine on it. So, tonight's presentation is going to be about setting up an open VPN server. These steps are going to look very familiar if you've watched some of our other videos about an open VPN server, but they're tailored for our home lab server running LXD. So with that, the first step we're going to have to do is to create our new container. To do that, we're going to run the command sudo -i. Now, if you're familiar with working with LXD, or LXC on other systems, you know that you don't have to use the dash I for some reason, unbeknownst to me, and that I can't figure out from reading on forums, you have to use the dash I to get it to work with the Raspberry Pi. So sudo dash I LXC launch Ubuntu colon version number, in my case 21.04, and the name of the container, which we're just going to call OpenVPN. Press enter, and we begin creating our container. Now if you were following along in the previous video about creating a PyHole container on this very same server, you're going to notice that it's a little bit quicker. That's because LXC and LXD store the image after it's being downloaded and we're using the same container image as we used for setting up that PyHole server. Also, if you're coming to this video without watching the rest of our LXC series and you're wondering how we're getting our IP address to be that of our network so we can work with this container from our network without being behind a proxy created with the LXD bridge. That configuration is shown in the Raspberry Pi installing LXD video. All right, so our container should be created now. And if we use a sudo dash I LXC list command, we should be able to see it appearing with our PyHole server. There you have it. But that IP address is dynamic and we most likely want a static IP address so we can point our router to it when we open up our port for incoming data. To do that, we need to log into our container and begin working with it. sudo -i lxc exec name of the container and bash. Should run a apt update and now we need to configure netplan so we can actually change to a static IP address. First step is to find the name of our netplan configuration file. To do that I'm going to run the command ls on the directory etc slash netplan. Now that we know the name of our YAML file, we can use nano to edit this file. So nano etc netplan slash YAML file, which in my case is 50 cloud init. So I'm copying in the five lines that I need, but I need to edit them so they all line up with this DHCP4. Noticing that the addresses under name server has two extra indents. Do not use the tab key as it counts as a different character than spaces and your YAML file will fail. We can comment out the DHCP4 true line because we want to be static. And edit the IP address that we want for our server 
And notice this slash 24 at the end. Fill in the IP address of my router on my network side. And for addresses, I am going to enter the DNS address for my local Pi-hole server that we set up in a previous video. But you can use anything from Google's, which you saw configured there, NetFlares, or a different Pi-hole server if you so choose. Now we can hit Control X, Y for yes, and enter. To apply the configuration, we run NetPlan apply. And running IP address will show us that right here, our IP address has changed to that that we have configured in the YAML file. So we can move on with the rest of the process of setting up this container. So we can type exit and we're actually going to type turn this container off by typing sudo i lxc stop and open vpn now let's use lxc list to verify the container is no longer running and you can see that status is stopped so it's no longer running and we now need to configure the host to support tun tun is a way of establishing ip addresses that OpenVPN uses, and it is important for the function of your OpenVPN server. sudo i lxc config set openvpn roar dot lxc quote lxc dot c group dot devices dot allow equals c 10 dash 200 r w end end quote is the first command you're going to use to begin allowing TUN to work correctly in your OpenVPN container. Now we're going to run sudo i and another LXC configuration to actually pass the TUN file into our container. LXC config device add container name or OpenVPN TUN Unix char path equals dev net tun. All right, so we can now start our container back up. Verify it's running with list, and it is. So now we can log back into it. And we need to make sure our container has the tun file. We're going to do that with mk node dash dev dash net dash tun space lowercase c space 10 space 200 and we get a message that it already exists so now we can move on to installing get to use our script the same script that we used in our proxmox video and to install openvpn and we're actually going to do this in one command today apt install OpenVPN space git. And we probably should have added dash y to the end of that. We'll find out here in a second. Looks like we didn't need it. So now let's go ahead and go to our git repository and grab the script that we're going to use to finish installing OpenVPN. I've read through this script before and I know it's legit. You should always read through every script and make sure it's doing what you intend it to do. It's just good practice. This is also the same exact script that is suggested by Proxmox for the configuration of OpenVPN servers in their systems. CD to OpenVPN dash install. And you'll see the script here. Let's run bash OpenVPN dash install. Dot sh. So with that, we're going to choose the default of UDP and we're going to configure a port that we want to use. The default port will work just fine for us today. And our resolver one 
use current resolver. That is the resolver we set up during NetPlan. So one will work. Enter the name of our first client. I'm going to call it test. Call yours, whatever you would like. And we'll press enter to begin running the process. All right, so your OpenVPN server is now up and running, but we need to get the configuration file that we created. So to do that, we can cd to root and run an ls command, and we see test.ovpn. You can use your favorite technique for moving this OVPN file. I traditionally use SCP, but another one that I've used in the past is actually a little bit simpler. I'll actually just go nano tests.ovpn, open the file, and then copy and paste the contents of this file back to my system in a text editor like Atom, or whichever you choose. Just make sure the file when you save it is a .ovpn file and not a .txt. With that, it concludes our video of setting up an open VPN server on an LXD device running on a Raspberry Pi. I hope you enjoyed tonight's video presentation. And if you'd like to support us, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. As always, have a good night.